Hello everyone. In previous section, if we have a population where we have an experiment that produced either success or failure, then in this population, we can define P, the proportion, as the probability of success. Now, if I take a sample here of large size N, and we can assume N is larger than 30, and number of success here equal or larger than 10, and number of failure equal or larger than 10. And we define x here, number of success. So we have x1, x2, x, and each one could be either success or failure. If we don't know this proportion and we want to estimate it, then in previous section we had point estimate. We say an estimation of P will be the number of success in the sample divided by N, the size of the sample. And if we want to know the uncertainty in this estimate, we learn that it will be the variance of X divided by N squared. And since these X follow a binomial distribution, then the variance we found it in, in chapter 3, it's N P 1 minus P divided by N squared. So then the standard deviation of our estimate or the uncertainty is just the square root of P1 minus P over N. This we learned it in the previous section. Okay, now according to the central limit theorem, P hat will have a normal distribution with mean equal the proportion of the population and standard deviation equal this. So if I draw it, it will look something like this. This is the probability density function for the sample proportion with mean equal P and standard deviation sigma P hat, and this is sigma P hat. So we're going to use this fact to find the confidence interval for a proportion that estimate the actual proportion of the population with a certain confidence level. So for example, I may find for this sample the proportion this one, for another sample different proportion. But let's assume I found this number, then it could fall here. And with a specific confidence level, I can go as far here and as far here. And depending on the confidence level, the actual value P will be in this range. The higher the confidence level, the larger the confidence interval. Okay, so let's continue showing the steps to find the confidence intervals. Now, if I want to find the confidence interval of the proportion P, we represent it as X over N plus minus the standard deviation, the uncertainty. Now, you can think of this as 1. And just the same as finding the confidence interval for the mean, we used to call this Z alpha over 2. And if I want to know what's the confidence level for this point estimate with this uncertainty, we have this is P and one standard deviation to the right, one standard deviation to the left. This is 68%. So the confidence level in this case is 68%. But now if I want to find the confidence interval for any specified confidence level, like 90% confidence level or 95% confidence level, then we will define the confidence interval as the estimate of the proportion plus minus Z alpha over two square root P 1 minus P over N for specified confidence level. And how do we find Z alpha over 2? Same as before, we go to the standard normal distribution. And with the Z-score transformation, this P hat will be mapped to 0 and the standard deviation will be mapped to 1. And if I go 1 to the right, standard deviation 1 to the left, then this area will be 0.68, given that Z alpha over 2 is 1. And then we say this is the confidence interval with 68% confidence level. 
if they want a confidence interval with a higher confidence level, then that means we increase this area more to be larger than 0.68, maybe 0.8, then the confidence interval will be this one. And then Z alpha over 2 would be more than 1. In this case, it could be 1.3. Okay, let us raise this and continue finding the confidence interval for specified confidence level. If they gave us a confidence level of 90%, then this area will be 90%. And this will be alpha over 2. 10% divided by 2 is 5%. And here, 5%, that's alpha over 2. So that is 0.05. And then we find here Z alpha over 2 from the table, and this will be Z alpha over 2. Now, there is a simple correction. If this condition is not met, N is not large enough to have 10 success and 10 failure in the sample, then this confidence interval will be modified as this one, where P delta here will equal x plus n divided by this n and this n is the sample size plus 4 and x the number of success in the sample we add to it 2. From experiment they found this is a better estimation for the proportion if n is not large enough to have 10 success and 10 failure in the sample space. Let's take this example the article, The Functional Outcomes of Total Knee Arthroplasty, report that out of 10,501 surgery, 859 resulted in complication with six months of surgery. So then imagine this is the population of arthroplasty surgery. They take a sample here of N equal 10,501, and they found X surgery that had complication 859. Now they want to find the confidence interval for 98% confidence level. Now since this very large sample and we know the number of failed surgery is 859 and there are more than 5000 failure so we don't need to modify add to n4 and to success 2 we can just go ahead and say the confidence interval is point estimate that is 859 divided by 10,501 plus minus z alpha over 2 we need to find it for the 98% confidence level square root p which we don't know but we estimate it to be 859 divided by 10,501 time 1 minus p which is 859 10,501 divided by n which is 10,501. So I'm using this basically. I'm not doing the correction. And if we do the correction for this one, it, the answer will come very, very close. Just imagine 10,501 plus 4 will make no difference. Okay, this equal 0 0.0818 plus minus z alpha over 2. 0.00267 and if we look into the table to find what is z alpha over 2 this is 98 percent 0.98 so alpha will be 2 percent so alpha over 2 will be 1 percent which is 0.01 and here 1 percent 0.01 and if we look into the table the standard normal distribution 0.01 is between these two. So that's minus 2.3 and between these two. So that is 2.5. These equal minus 2.325. So the confidence interval equal 0.0818 plus minus Z is 2.325 time this quantity 0 0.00267 0 0.0818 plus minus 0 0.0062
and this is the same answer here to this one. And in solving this problem, I didn't use this and this one. So I didn't say, okay, the proportion will be X, which is 859 plus 2 divided by N hat, which is 10,501 plus 4. And if I calculate this, it will be 0.081. 9609 and if I compare it to these it come very close now if I am interested in the lower confidence bound for the P same as the mean it will be the point estimate minus Z so now I am interested in finding what is the lower limit of the proportion what is the lower probability of success then that's the lower limit, which will be P minus one standard deviation multiplied by the Z alpha. That is determined by the confidence level. If I am interested on the upper bound, a scenario I want to know what is the highest proportion of failure in an experiment. So if my concern now failure, the lower is good. Zero failure is excellent, but I want to know what's the maximum it can be. So if I want to estimate P, the upper bound here, then it will be Z alpha. Now, it's not alpha over 2, it's alpha, because if the confidence level is 90%, then alpha is 10%, and all this 10% will be here, because I'm not concerned about the lower bound. And you follow the same steps. Okay, let's do this example. So this is related to the previous example where we have a surgery and we took a sample and N was... 10,501 surgery and surgery with complication 859. And in previous example, we found that 98% confidence level surgery with complication will fall between these values. So it could be as low as 8.196 minus 0.623. So it could be as low as 0.7573 and the complication as high as 0.08 and we estimated the proportion here 0.08196 now in this a surgeon claim that the rate of complication is less than 8.5 percent so now he's setting an upper bound that it will be 8.5 so he set the upper bound to be somewhere here 0.085 and we want to know what level of confidence can this claim be made how sure is the surgeon about this claim so from previous example we estimate the proportion p equal 859 plus 2 over 10,501 we are using the correction plus four so these came 0.08196 and we found the standard deviation to be 0.08196 time 1 minus 0.08196 divided by n delta which is 10501 plus 4 and this came 0.002676. So this we did it in the previous example in part A. So now he is claiming the upper bound, which is this one, P delta plus Z alpha one minus is equal or less than 0.085. And we want to know what's the confidence level. We need to know this. So we plug value for p delta is 0.08196 plus z alpha and this we found it to be 0.002676 equal or less than 0.085 and if we solve for z alpha we will find z alpha to be 1.136 now we go to the standard normal distribution and find what is the area to the left of 1.136 z alpha so we need to find what is this area and that would be the confidence level for this clay and if we go 1.1 here and 3 is here so we go here this is 1.13 
but ours is 1.136 so it's between these two so I can take 0.872 in between these two numbers so this area then is 0.872 and the confidence level for this claim is 87.2 percent which is this one now as we said the traditional method if the number of success in the sample is 10 or more and the number of failures is 10 and more then you can use this one that means instead of using p delta x plus 2 divided by n plus 4 just use x over n and the answer will be almost the same okay next section will be how do we come up with the confidence interval for the mean if the size of the sample is small thank you for watching